Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. And I'm here to check in with our video blog, weekly video blog update number 22, covering One Community's progress and accomplishments for the week of July 22nd, 2013. Purpose of our organization is to build a new world. We want to give people a diversity of options that are interested in sustainability, fulfilled living, self-sufficiency, and uh, living an ecological life, ultimately for the highest good of all life on this planet. We'd like to give people a diversity of options on how to do that. And so our organization is open source, project launch, blueprinting, and free sharing, everything necessary to create complete teacher demonstration villages, communities, and cities, including food, housing, energy infrastructure, as well as a social architecture model, resource-based economy model, and uh, educational model, and a whole lot more. So nonprofit, for-profit, business options, as well as a highest good for all uh, culture that we are founding our organization on. And everything that we do is open source and free shared so people can use it in the way that they want, take the pieces that they like, don't use the pieces that you don't like, and evolve it in whatever direction works best. So this is our update, our video blog. As always, if you'd like to see the details of what I'm sharing, um, click on the link in the description. It'll take you to a written blog that has links and pictures of everything that I'm about to talk about. I'll go through a quick overview, and then I'll go into a little bit more depth. So in this last week, we have accomplished, um, gotten all three Wallapini planting maps and lists up on the website. So all the food and everything that's up that will be growing in all three of the Wallapinis is now up on the websites. We also uh, added a cross-section rendering of Wallapini number two to show how the light will come through in that structure, which is gonna grow over 140 different trees in a structure that's only 60 feet long by 30 feet wide. So it's pretty amazing to see cross-section of that. Really beautiful work by Douglas Stenhouse, architect and watercolor artist. Um, we've also updated the tropical atrium design there's um, some new 3D renderings, thanks to the amazing work of Devin Porter, uh, who's just, man, he, the guy has a gift. And so uh, if you'd like to see pictures of those, it's in the written block as well. And um, we've now got the tropical atrium uh, food items, all of the different plants are going to be planted in the tropical atrium, edited through number 40 of 60. And this has been a lengthy process I'll talk about afterwards. Additionally, this last week, we now have uh, half of the Pod 1 materials are done. Um, we've started redoing all the Sego Center internal walls in 3D. I'll talk about why in a second. We announced our Western State Design partner, our Eco Laundry partner, as well as we actually uh, we announced the Century Farm Orchards partner, who I spoke about in the last blog. And we've uh, got the infrastructure, the foundations done for the Education for Life program or the basics. Uh, I'd say, well, eh, it's about 25%. You know, we finished it and we kind of restarted on the strategies of being component which is strategies of amazing communicators teachers and leaders as a structure for teachers and community members in general to help hold ourselves and our each other accountable to a higher level of consciousness and personal growth and self-development and so that page now behind the scenes is about I'd say it's probably about 25 percent done and so that's what we've accomplished in the last week uh, more details on all of that, just to go into the specifics of this stuff. Uh, and the Wallapini planting maps and lists that are up, we now have all three maps are done for the Wallapini, so you can see everything that's going to be grown in there in a beautiful map with numbers that will re that reference what is going to be grown there. And so behind the scenes, we're working now on the Zenapini list, as well as we've got two people doing full-time editing on the Wallapini plants as well as the tropical atrium plants and so it's just a this is a massive amount of work you know you got to research each plant you got to research the cultural considerations you got to research the planting guidelines and considerations as well and then uh, all of our team put a lot of time and energy into thinking about every single plant that was chosen why it was placed where it was placed and so we have all the details of placement in there as well and so we're going through the process of editing all these and that's why mentioned that we're now done with the first 40 for the tropical atrium which was the first of all of these uh, food producing houses that was completed and so we've been using that as our refining process and dialing in exactly 
what information is going on the website, and then we've got to edit all the images and post those on the website. So it's just a just a massive undertaking. <clears throat> but if you want to see completed completed plants, if you go to the Tropical Atrium Planting and Harvesting page, if you go to the Wallapini one, two, or three, or actually if you go to the large scale Aquapini planting and harvesting page or, or for all of those, uh, they're all on one page. The large scale Aquapini, the Wallapini one, Wallapini two, Wallapini three, those are all on one page. If you go to that page, you can see the plants that we put up. So our goal is to put them up as quickly as we can get them edited and finalized. And we put those up on there and when it's done, it will have all of the details in one spot for everything that'll be planted in those structures. And then we will update that and we'll be adding all kinds of open source details on maintenance for those plants, how to take care of them, how to make them ha happy and uh, maximally productive. All those details will come once we're on the property and we start operating these, these structures. And then we'll work as a global collaborative with other people that build the same structures and want to plant completely different things. Then we can plug that information in as well and show people the diversity of what can be built in these structures. They're affordable, they're easier to maintain the temperatures in the traditional greenhouses, uh, and they produce food year-round. And in the case of all the structures that we're building, uh, we're incorporating them with our botanical garden model, so we will be uh, logging every single plant that's been planted in there and keeping track of all those details uh, in accordance with the guidelines for a botanical garden and they will also provide a recreational space. So really some pretty exciting stuff that's being moved forward. And so now that we've got all the plants selected, we're now, we've got our team that's doing all the editing on those and getting those up on the page. And then we also have another member of our team who is now working on the Xenopenies. And so the Xenopenies are specifically meant to represent educational environments that also produce food um, and provide a really, really beautiful place to visit to experience like like a botanical garden only a smaller version of this that people could build in their backyard and so the designs on those are really coming along as well um, so that's in the food infrastructure uh, I mentioned also the tropical atrium we've got some updates to the 3d designs on those we realized in the designs on those that the north roof is space that really isn't used and so Devin Porter suggested that we would put a, uh, a patio up there that would overlook all of the Earthbag Village and we decided to do that which has also allowed us to add some storage into that area as well very affordable to add these modifications on it'll actually increase the insulation for that north wall as well and so we're excited to have to show those to you and those images are done in 3D and then uh, the other details I mentioned pod 1 materials we're about halfway done for the pod 1 materials now um, which is great. We've got the tools and equipment details are done. So if you want to see those, those are already up on the website. Now the materials are 50% done. And so hopefully we'll get those up in the net, on the website in the next couple of weeks. And that'll pretty much wrap up. Well, yeah, we still got to do the materials and stuff for the tropical atrium. So we've got a lot of work still to do on that. But the pod one, the Earthbag Village materials for all of the actual structures, the um, stairways, the patio areas, all that kind of stuff. We're, we're halfway done with that. Um, and then the last thing that I mentioned, or two other things that I mentioned, uh, number one is the Sago Center. So we've been working diligently to get the Sago Center into 3D. Uh, a lot of work by Carl Harris has gone into that. And uh, unfortunately this week we realized that we had Carl been able to put the Sago Center, a lot of the walls in 3D into Revit. And we were transferring those over into SketchUp because SketchUp is a free program, we want everybody to have access to modify the 3D uh, details that we're building out. And unfortunately, everything that we transferred over to Revit, or most everything that we transferred over from Revit, is not usable by us. And so, unfortunately, we had to scrap all of the internal walls and were and start over on that. So. The domes look great. We finalized the openings to those. We've got the swimming pool, the natural pool in there, and the pond and those kinds of details. But it's, uh, it's a pretty big step back to have to redo all the walls on the inside. It's a couple weeks of work that we're now starting over. Hopefully it's going to go a lot faster um, now, that we're, now that we've already done it once. Um, and so we're working on that, which is a testament to the open source process. You know, this is the whole purpose of our organization is to open source finished products and we call it project launch blueprinting 
because everything that we do, then people can take all this immense amount of work that we're doing and they can build off of it, make it bigger, make it better. Imagine if you already had the whole planting plan done, the whole designs done for the wallapinis and the aquapinis, all of that stuff, how to maintain it, everything you need, a virtual uh, manual, operations and construction manual for everything as well as video tutorials, etc. And our organization is purposed so that when people ask us questions, to answer those questions, refine the process and make it even easier to duplicate it. And then to collaborate and coordinate with anybody else that builds our builds these models and wants to open source with us, to collaborate and coordinate with them so that they can make the archive of how to make these these amazing structures even more amazing and more functional and more adaptable and more diversely applied. Anybody who wants to work with us on that, we'll coordinate with them so that we can add to the open source archive. And so by doing this, we want to create a complete village construction set. That's what we want to do. A complete town, sustainable city, sustainable village, get off the grid, completely uh, unplug and be able to live virtually self-sufficiently, at least as far as food, energy, and housing is concerned, with a business model to support that as well. So that people that come and visit can come and experience this lifestyle and then if they want to duplicate it have access to the open source blueprints and in so doing duplicate everything that we're everything that we're creating or evolve everything that we're creating and so um, <laughs> our process of having to redo a lot of these foundations so that we have really quality open source content for the public and looking into the future at how this stuff is going to be used is a great example of why it's so important you know, we're really, really, um, we're dedicated to putting it out there in a way that, that people can duplicate and that's usable. And so, you know, when we run into something that says, oh, you know, this isn't usable, it's not adaptable, it's not modifiable enough, or it's not clear enough, then we take the extra time to go through and fix it. And so that's a lot of, we spend a lot of time doing that. But in the process, we're getting really, really clear on the process itself for doing that. You know, we're getting more and more effective, more and more efficient at doing that. The education program, which is the last thing I want to talk about, uh, is another example of this. You know, it's gone through so many iterations and re redrafts and redraws and restructuring of it and it just keeps evolving. But every time it evolves, it comes out on the other side of that uh, as a better creation. And so we want to continue this evolution and growth process indefinitely as an organization, but also indefinitely as a collaborative entity working with as a, co a cooperative working with anybody else on the planet that's interested in highest good of all thinking open source creation or just that wants to duplicate some sustainable component that we've created if there's questions that we can answer then we'll answer those and then as people say hey I want to do it differently I want to do it take it in a different direction then we would like to to be a great place to store the archive of information the open source and free shared information for anybody else that could benefit from that all in one place and so you know we've got several websites that are dedicated to this and we were really uh, we put the time and, and attention and energy into building the infrastructure so that we've got it in place as this whole thing keeps evolving because uh, there's not really any end to it you know and our goal one of the common questions that we get is how long do you think it's going to take to really make a, a noticeable impact on the world uh, our projections say that we could we could make a dramatic enough impact from today, within 30 years, three decades, we believe that this model can be successful enough to positively impact every single person on this planet in some way. That's our goal. And so, um, in following the highest good of all philosophy, and in keeping our compass pointed in that direction, we believe that everything that we do be it duplicated as an individual component or just shared as an idea or duplicated as a complete teacher demonstration community village or city it doesn't really matter you know if we really focus on doing what's in the highest good of humanity and the highest good of all life on this planet the highest good of the economy and the highest good of all of it if we really really focus on okay we just want to do what's right for everybody and do our best to maintain that then we feel that anybody that duplicates what we're doing and regardless of what their intent is, if they use our open source blueprints and our, our free shared material, it'll be moving humanity, the whole hum, human organism, in the right direction. And so that's why we talk about building a new world, and you know, and why we look at it as as a real.
comprehensive look, a, a re-addressing of the foundations of how we as a species live, and in so doing that, readdressing the foundations of what's possible with life in a really, really beautiful and positive uh, evolutionary growth forward moving, fulfilled and enriching way. And uh, we have our idea of what that looks like, which is our open source and nonprofit organization and creating these duplicable models for everybody else to follow. And we believe that when we create these and make it easy enough and affordable enough and, and um, simple enough for people to understand exactly what needs to be done so that people can engage in the process themselves, understanding what they're getting into, how much time it's going to take, how much energy it's going to take, and it's going to take way less time and money and energy because we're doing everything we can to make it duplicable. And then we see people taking that information and evolving it even further in all these different directions. And so in so doing, providing something that works for everybody with completely different ideas, values, personal concepts of how it should be structured, etc. We want to provide the infrastructure so that all those ideas have fertile ground to take root. So all those ideas have a good platform to build off of. And then the joy that our organization gets to see is the next iteration. That's going to be bigger and better and the next version, the next version, the next version, etc. And where this goes. And so, you know, we look into the future 30 years. We see a very, very different world for our children, for our grandchildren, for their grandchildren. And uh, that's what motivates us. One of the many things that motivates us. So many reasons to do this. So anyway, that's it. Short vlog for me this time. Thanks for tuning in. And until next week, have a great day. Keep following our project. Please subscribe to our channel. We love it. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Um, you know, we're on all the different social uh, networking sites. And so if you're interested, if you're participating in any of those LinkedIn, all of them, we're, we're out there. And so please share information if you agree what we're doing. We appreciate the wonderful emails and comments that we get. Thanks for your participation, cooperation. Uh, cruising our website and just liking our pages in there is also very, very helpful. So um, until next week, have a good one. Thanks for following our project.